Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Today I'm going to recap the um, MLB, WNBA, and notable soccer games from yesterday. Look ahead to today's games in each sport. Men's College World Series, we have to recap um, Calder Cup Final Game 6. I'm going to give out a portfolio pick for you guys. My latest NBA mock draft, news and notes, and best bet. We'll start with baseball. Um, we'll go over... The results from yesterday's games and look ahead to today's slate. Cards over the Nats, 8-6. Tigers over the Royals, 6-4. So best bet was a winner. Marlins over the Jays, 11-0. Cubs over the Pirates, 8-0. Reds over the Rockies, 5-4. Red Sox over the Twins, 9-3. T-backs over the Brewers, 9-1. Mets over the Astros, 11-1. Rangers over the White Sox, 5-2. And the Giants over the Padres, 7-4 and 10 on a three-run walk-off home run by Mike Yastrzemski to get the win for the Giants. All right, tonight's game, 640 on CBS. You have the Braves and the Phillies, so an ALDS rematch with uh, Spencer Strider and Ranger Suarez. Um, The Braves feel like a team to me on legit uh, cruise control. Um... They're minus 154. The Phils are plus 130 over on their 8.5. Over is minus 102, and there's minus 120. Braves minus 1.5 is plus 115. Phils plus 1.5 is minus 138. Um, tough one. Um, I'm going to go with over 4.5. Braves runs minus 105. I know Ranger Suarez is pitching a little better, but... I just don't trust the Phil's bullpen. Um, O's Rays. Kyle Bradish and Tyler Glasnow. Rays minus 178. O's plus 150. Over under 8. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. O's plus 1 half is minus 137. Rays minus 1 half is plus 114. Great series, by the way. Great series. Um, O's three back in the division. Um, both these guys are pitching very well right now. But I'm going to go with under three Oriole runs plus 116 only because that has some value at the plus money. Rails Tigers, Daniel Lynch and Michael Lorenzen. Tigers minus 146, Royals plus 124, over under eight and a half. Over is minus 115, under is minus 105. Royals plus one half is minus 156, Tigers minus one half is plus 130. Um, Michael Lorenzen's pitching a lot better lately. Um, so I'm going to go, though, with over four and a half Tiger runs at minus 110 because of how bad Daniel Lynch has been. Jays Marlins, Issa Kikuchi, and Yuri Perez. Um, Kikuchi, a lot of wins, but, um, means... Nothing because I don't think he's that good. Uh, Marlins minus 112. Jays minus 104. Over under 8. Minus 120. Jays minus 1.5 is plus 168. Marlins plus 1.5 is minus 205. Marlins favored on the money line. Jays favored on the run line. Um, I love the Marlins at minus 112. 7 o'clock Mariners Yankees. Let's see if the Yankees snap the losing streak here. George Kirby and Garrett Cole. This is a, as bit as is a must win as the Yankees are having the regular season. Um, they're minus 134 favorites. Seattle's plus 116 over under 7. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. Mariners plus 1.5 is minus 94. Yankees minus 1.5 is plus 160. Um, as much as I, how I feel about this Yankees game, betting their under total runs is the move until Aaron Judge comes back. Under 3.5 runs, minus 114. Maybe they win like 3-1 or something like that. Um, next up is Cards Nats. Jordan Montgomery and Mackenzie Gore. Cards minus 154. Nats plus 130. Over under 8.5. Overs minus 110. Unders minus 104. Cardinals minus 1.5 is plus 114. Nats plus 1.5 is minus 137. Um, taking the Nats straight up did not work yesterday. Um, I'm going full game under here. Under 8.5 minus 104. Um, Cubs Pirates. Marcus Stroman and Johan Oviedo. Marcus Stroman's been great for Chicago. Their favorite minus 126. Pittsburgh plus 108. Over under 8. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. 
Cubs minus one half is plus one twenty eight. Pirates plus one half is minus one fifty four. The Cubs have kind of turned it around a little bit. They are just playing very poorly, and now they're playing as good as they were early on in the year, if not better. Um, so for this one, I'm going under eight runs at minus one hundred eight. Rockies Reds, Noah Davis and Ben Lively. Reds minus one ninety. Rockies plus one fifty over under ten. Overs minus one fifteen. Overs minus one hundred five. Rocks plus one half is minus one twenty-five. Reds minus one half is plus one hundred four. For this one, it's going to be over five and a half. Reds runs minus one ten. Um, Ace Guardians, Luis Medina and Aaron Savali. Guardians minus two thirty. Ace plus one ninety. Over under nine. Overs even money. Unders minus one twenty-two. A's plus one half and Guardians minus one half is minus one ten each way. I'm going with the Guardians run line minus one half and minus one ten. Seven thirty Red Sox Twins. Cutter Crawford and Bailey Ober. Twins minus one forty two. Boston plus one twenty over under eight and a half. Overs minus one fifteen. Unders minus one hundred five. Red Sox plus one half is minus one sixty two. Twins minus one half is plus one thirty four. Um, the Red Sox have kind of. Turned it on offensively lately. Um, I don't want to go over on the runs because Bailey Ober has been so good for Minnesota. So instead, um, I think Boston's pitching regresses a little bit. I'm going to say over four and a half twins runs at minus 105. D-backs Brewers. Ryan Nelson and Colin Rea. Brewers minus 130. D-backs plus 110 over under nine. Overs minus 114. Others minus 106. D-backs plus one half is minus one eighty-two. Brewers minus one half is plus one ten. I'm going with the Diamondbacks straight up. Plus one ten. Mets Astros. Justin Verlander and Fran Valdez. Let's see if the Mets can do it again. Um Astros are favored though, minus one forty six, Mets plus one twenty four, over under seven and a half, over is even money, unders minus one twenty two. Mets plus one half is minus one sixty six. Astros minus one half is plus one thirty eight. Um, that was about as big as a win you'll see from the Mets all season the other day. Um, but I'm going to go over four Astros runs at plus one four. I think their offense bounces back a little bit. Rangers, White Sox, um, Nate Evaldi and Dylan Cease. Rangers minus 134, White Sox plus 114 over under eight and a half. Overs minus 105, unders minus 115. Rangers minus one half is plus one twenty five. White Sox plus one half is minus one fifty. I'm going full game under. Pirates Giants at nine forty five. Seth Lugo and Anthony D. Scalfani. Padres minus one sixteen. Giants minus one two over under eight and a half. Overs minus one fifteen. Unders minus one five. Padres minus one half is plus one forty six. Giants plus one half is minus one seventy six. Padres are favored based on reputation. Let's be honest, not because of record right now. Um. But it's different from the Yankees and even the Mets to some degree because the Mets were missing Alonzo. The Yankees are still missing Judge. But the Padres are favored in the spot based on preseason reputation and their annual CS last year. I'm taking the Giants at minus 102. And at TBS tonight at 10 o'clock, the Dodgers and Angels, so a doubleheader. Clayton Kershaw and Reed Detmers. It's a nice doubleheader, too. Dodgers minus 148, Angels plus 106, over under 8.5, overs minus 122, under is even money. Dodgers minus 1.5 is plus 114, Angels plus 1.5 is minus 137. For this one, I like under 3.5, Angel runs at plus 106. Clayton Kershaw is just still a warrior. He's still really good. I know his ERA has kind of gone up lately, but no Rodon for, uh, or Rendon for the Angels. And I know the Angels are hot. They're well over 500 right now, but I just can't go against Kershaw. So I'm going with uh, the under Angel runs at plus money. All right, now move on to the WNBA. We will look at the slate for tonight's games. There's three. 8 o'clock NBA TV of the Dream and the Wings. The Wings are favored by three and a half. Total is one sixty nine and a half. Um, hmm, this is a hard one. I like Atlanta getting the three and a half. I don't know if they'll win outright, but I think that's a good number. Um, 
CBS Sports Network at 10 o'clock. You have the links and the sparks. The sparks for 5 five and a half. Totals 159 and a half. I'll take the over. And on NBA TV tonight at 10 o'clock, you have the Sun and the Storm. The Sun are favored by 8.5, totals 159 and a half. The Storm are disappointing 3-7. and seven. Um, They've covered a few times, and I believe they did win as a big underdog. Who won as a big dog at the Liberty? I want to say that was Chicago. But for this one... I like the over as well. I think it's a low total, and I think that the uh, the big guns on the sun can um, put big performances up. All right, now we'll move on to soccer. Um, we have results to go over from yesterday and look ahead to um, today's games within the European qualifying. Um. So yesterday, um, Armenia over Latvia 2-1, Ukraine over Malta 1-0, Finland over San Marino 6-0, Israel over Andorra 2-1, Kazakhstan over Northern Ireland 1-0, Republican Ireland over Gibraltar 3-0, Slovenia, Denmark 1-1 draw, Switzerland, Romania 2-2 draw, Turkey over Wales 2-0, Belarus over Kosovo 2-1, France over Greece 1-0, and England over North Macedonia 7 0. Right, more group stage games today. At 245, you have Liechtenstein and Slovakia. Um, Slovakia is favored minus 1800. Liechtenstein is 44 to 1. The draw is 12 to 1. I'm going to go under 3.5 goals at even money. Iceland and Portugal. Portugal's minus 50. Iceland's 8-1. The draw is plus 450. I'm going to go with under 2.5 goals at plus 118. Hungary and Lithuania. Um, Hungary is minus 700. Lithuania is 16-1. The draw is plus 650. Um, for this one, I like under 2.5 goals too at plus 114. Scotland and Georgia. Um, Scotland's minus 190, Georgia plus 550, the draws plus 290. Um, I like over two and a half goals at even money. Um, Estonia and Belgium. Um, Belgium's minus 390, Estonia's 9 to 1, the draws plus 480. For this one, I'm going to go under two and a half goals at plus 132. Um, Norway and Cyprus. Um, Norway's minus 1,300. Cyprus is 3,500. The draw is 850. Um, over three and a half goals, plus 108. Bosnia, hers, and Luxembourg. Bosnia is minus 250. Luxembourg six to one. The draw is three to one. For this one, we're gonna go over two and a half goals at minus one hundred two. Next up, we have Austria and Sweden, which is an interesting one. Um, Austria is plus one hundred five. Sweden is plus two seventy. Draws plus two thirty. Um, I'm gonna go Austria at home at plus one hundred five. Faroe Islands and Albania. Um, Albania is minus one sixty five. Faroe Islands is five to one. The draw is plus two fifty. For this one, we're gonna go over two and a half goals at plus one forty eight. Moldova and Poland. Poland's minus two fifty. Moldova's plus one at nine fifty. The draw is four to one. Going over two and a half goals at minus one hundred six. And last but not least, Bulgaria and Serbia. Serbia's minus ten. Bulgaria's six to one. The draw is plus three ten. I'm going over two and a half goals at minus one oh eight. All right. Next up is the. Uh, Second round of 
CONCACAF Gold Cup qualifying 4-3. You have uh, Guadalupe and Guyana. Um, so, um, I'm just going to do live upcoming. Yeah, I don't see that one on here. Um, 7.30, you have Martinique in Puerto Rico. And then 9 o'clock, you have St. Kitts and Nevis and French um, Guyana. If I had to pick one, I'm saying Guadalupe, Puerto Rico, and St. Kitts. A lot of friendlies today. Um, a couple final. Um, Japan over Peru 4-1. South Korea and El Salvador 1-1 draw. China over... Palestine 2 0. Going on right now, Vietnam and Syria, Malaysia and Papua New Guinea. 12 o'clock, you have Montenegro and Czech Republic. Um, Czech Republic's plus 125, Montenegro's plus 290, the draw's plus 190, or plus 230 is uh, Montenegro. Um, I'm going to go Czech Republic at plus. 125. Germany, Germany and Colombia at 245. Germany's minus 140. Colombia plus 320. Draws plus 280. I like how Columbus or Colombia is playing. I'm taking the draw plus 280. Algeria and Tunisia. Um, Algeria is minus 110. Tunisia is plus 310. The draws 2 to 1. I'm going Algeria minus 110. Brazil and Senegal. Brazil minus 80, Senegal 7 to 1, the draws plus 330. It's hard to go against Brazil. Going over two and a half goals at minus 108. Uruguay, Cuba, 730. Um, Uruguay's minus 4,000, Cuba 60 to 1, the draws 16 to 1. I'm going under three and a half goals at plus 144. 8 o'clock, Bolivia and Chile. Chile's minus 120, Bolivia plus 330, draws plus 220. Um, for this one, over two and a half goals, even money. And then 815, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Ecuador minus 195, Costa Rica plus 490, the draws plus 290. Um, for this one, we'll go over two and a half goals at minus 108. Um, Africa Cup of Nations qualifying, um, going on right now, nine o'clock, you have, um, Burundi and Namibia. 10 o'clock, you have Ethiopia and Mawali. And then two o'clock, you have Sudan and Mauritania. Um, I'm going to say... Namibia, draw, and draw for the picks there. And then European under 21. Some results from recently. So Thursday, um, Moldova over Gibraltar 3-1. Friday, Denmark over Lithuania 2-1. Faroe Island and Andorra 2-2 draw. And by the way, this is uh, under 21. And then Monday, Sweden over Gibraltar 5 0. And then today, 11 o'clock a.m., Latvia and San Marino. 12 o'clock, Denmark and Wales. 2 o'clock, Andorra and Belarus. And Kosovo and Estonia. Um, I'm going to say draw for Latvia, San Marino. Denmark beats Wales. Draw between Andorra and Belarus. And then Kosovo beats Estonia. Those are going to be my guesses. For those games. So a lot of international soccer today on the show. Um, all right, men's college World Series. Um, we'll go over the results from yesterday. And we will um, look ahead to today. Tennessee knocks out Stanford 6-4. Um, 
Good effort by Tennessee. And then double elimination. Number one, Wake Forest beats number five, LSU, 3-2. And that was a really good game to watch yesterday night. Two games today, 2 o'clock ESPN elimination game between TCU and Oral Roberts. Um, Oral Roberts is on some Cinderella run. Really, really awesome to see. Um, TCU's favorite minus 162. Oral Roberts plus 126 over under 12 and a half. Over is even money. Under is minus 132. TCU minus one half is minus one eight. Oral Roberts plus one half is minus one twenty. Um, so TCU survived against Virginia. Oral Roberts got knocked down to this round because they lost to Florida. Um, now this is a hard one, like very hard. And Earl Roberts is really good. I'm going to take them as an underdog to win outright at plus 126. In 7 o'clock on ESPN, you have number 5 LSU against Tennessee in an elimination game. Um, I don't see a line out for this. This is going to be a fabulous game. SEC teams going at it. Um, but at gunpoint, I think LSU wins. They have more talent led by Dylan Cruz. So I'm going to say uh, LSU knocks out. Tennessee, and I would assume that LSU is favored. And if the total's anything um, higher than nine and a half, I'm taking the under as well. All right, now we'll talk about the Calder Cup final from yesterday, game number six. Uh, Coachella Valley Firebirds defeat the Bears 5-2 to two to stave off elimination. So, Coachella Valley uh, holds serve on home ice. So, there will be a Game 7 tomorrow night. Um, so, it was a really interesting game. Um. Connor McMichael of the Bears scored within the first um, two minutes of the game, a minute 33 in to make it one nothing Bears. And you got to be thinking, okay, the pressure's on Coachella Valley. Nope, Coachella Valley. Max McCormick power play, 1-1. John Hayden, almost two minutes later, makes it 2-1. And then right as the period was about to come to an end, Cameron Hughes scores and makes it 3-1. Second period. Uh, Bears get within one on the goal by Beck Malenstein to make it 3-2. Then Cole Lynn of Coachella makes it 4-2 on the power play. And then in the third period, three minutes or almost four minutes into the period, Cole Lind again makes it 5-2. So they force a game seven, the three stars of the game. The number three star of the game with the goal, Cameron Hughes, number two star of the game with... Uh, 20 saves on 22 shots, Joey Decord, and the number one start of the game with two goals, Cole in. Game seven tomorrow night. It's going to be very interesting. Um, I think that Coachella is just an excellent offensive team. They're good on the power play. And the Bears have to play as good defense as they did in game five. Like, they were excellent defensively in Game 5. That was their best game of the series from a defensive standpoint. And they played well in Game 4, too. Game 3, they, um, Coachella Valley came back against them, but they won it in OT. So it's going to be an interesting uh, Game 7 come tomorrow night. It's going to be 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific tomorrow night. So it's going to be a really fun game. All right, the portfolio. Um, Tuesdays we do portfolio. Um, I give out a future. We'll see how it does. Um, I have my eyes on the NBA draft because it's Thursday, and I have not made an NBA draft future yet. So I'm going to look at the NBA um, draft stuff. And I'm going to... Um,
Gonna make a bet. There's a couple that stand out to me. Draft positions for certain guys have opened up. Like who the who's gonna be the whatever overall pick. Um so I have a lot of options here. But let's be honest, these odds are set based on mock drafts. They are. And um, there's a couple that jump out to me. In terms of value. And. The one. That I'm looking at. All right, there's one I liked, but I like exact order, but oh, it's plus 340. I, I don't like that. Um So the top 20 picks is always fun. But on a guy with good value to be a top 20 pick. Or even a top 10 pick is a lot of fun. Two. Um, so. The. Future I'm going to give out. I'm looking at the number 10 pick. Um, the Dallas Mavericks might trade it. A lot of people seem to think that they will trade it. Um, there's a lot of value on the board regarding the number 10 pick in the draft. There's a lot of guys I've seen for that spot. And same for number nine for the Jazz. Or I'm sorry, the uh yeah, it is the Jazz picking ninth, right? So um there's been some buzz about Oscar Thompson dropping. But I don't know if I really see it. And there's also been some buzz about Cam Whitmore dropping. So the case for Cam Whitmore dropping would be Wembenyama, Henderson, Miller, Amon, Jarris Walker, Osar, Taylor Hendricks, and then... Or let's say uh, Jarris Walker goes five, and then there's been some Hendricks at six buzz. So that would be uh, Cam Whitmore dropping in, in some scenario, too. So let's do the Cam Whitmore drops thing instead of Oster. But Oster dropping would be crazy. That would be, um, number five would be Whitmore, sixth would be Jarris Walker, seventh would be Hendricks, eighth would be Anthony Black, and also would be 13 to one to go ninth to the Jazz. And then Whitmore, 
Um, it's going to be Victor, Henderson, Miller, Eamon, Jarris, Osser, Hendricks, Black, and then Grady Dick or Kaysen Wallace. Whitmore's plus 750 to go ninth. Well, let's say they go with um, Bilal Colby or Kobe Bufkin. Grady Dick, somebody like that. Say if Cam Whitmore falls to 10th. I am going to go with Cam Whitmore to be the 10th overall pick at 34 to 1. I'm going to do. A fifth of a unit on it. I think it's a lot of value. 34-1 to 1 for Cam Whitmore to be the 10th pick in the draft. Again, the case is Wemby goes 1, Scoot goes 2, Brandon Miller goes 3, Eamon goes 4, Jarris Walker goes 5, Osser goes 6, Taylor Hendricks goes 7, Anthony Black goes 8. Pick your poison between Bilo Colby, Casey Wallace, Grady Dick, Kobe Bufkin goes 9th, and then Cam Whitmore drops to 10. So, um, that's just a really, really fun future. Maybe somebody trades up to get Cam Whitmore and Dallas moves out or whatever. So, that's just a fun uh, draft portfolio bet that I really like. And speaking of the NBA draft, I'm going to do my NBA mock draft right now. Um, as I do always, 1 to 30... We doing one tomorrow and then one Thursday and the th Thursday one will be the final one. A um a draft preview show maybe Wednesday night if uh, I have some time. Um, number one, the San Antonio Spurs, Victor Wembanyama, center France. We know about Wemby already. Can't say enough. He's gonna change the Spurs forever. To the Charlotte Hornets, Scoot Anderson, point guard, G League Ignite. Um. I think it's going to be Scoot here. Um, everyone seems to be thinking it will be Scoot. So much for the Brandon Miller rumors. Number three, the Portland Trailblazers. Brandon Miller, small forward, Alabama. Um, what the Hornets do at two is going to affect the Blazers. Um, it looks like the Blazers might trade the pick if Charlotte takes Scoot. I think this could go down to the to the very end. Number four, the Houston Rockets. Amen Thompson, point guard, overtime elite. Um, the Rockets seem to love Amen Thompson. There's some talk that they like him just as much as Scoot and Brendan Miller, which is insane. Number four, the Houston Ro or number five, the Detroit Pistons. Cam Whitmore, small forward, power forward, Villanova. Um, I have Whitmore going fifth in the mock, but he's not favored to go fifth, as we know. Um. But I like the fit here. They need a wing. Number six, the Orlando Magic. Jarris Walker, power forward, Houston. Um, I think this would be an interesting pick from a fit standpoint and how he would look with Franz Wagner and Paolo Banchero. Seven, the Indiana Pacers. Oster Thompson, shooting guard, small forward, overtime elite. On um, the Pacers, landing Oster here would be amazing. Um, people think he has higher upside than Amen because of his three point shooting. Eight, the Washington Wizards, Anthony Black, point guard, Arkansas. This feels like a pick that's going to happen. Um, Black just about does everything. He's a smart player. Number nine, the Utah Jazz, Taylor Hendricks, power forward, UCF. Um, the Jazz were surprisingly decent, as we know, and they're not far away. Um, Hendricks would provide much needed uh, front court depth behind uh, Laurie Markinen and Walker Kessler. Number 11, or 10, the Dallas Mavericks. Derek Lively Jr., center, Duke. Um, This pick makes sense because the Mavs need a long-term answer at center. Um, He has two-way upside, but he really wasn't consistent in college. Number 11, the Orlando Magic from the Chicago Bulls. Grady Dick, shooting guard, Kansas. With their second lottery pick, the Magic go with um, someone who is very fun in Dick. Makes a lot of sense with his ability to shoot the three and defend. Number 12, the Oklahoma City Thunder. By law, Colibly, small forward, France. The Thunder can afford to take big swings on picks and 
I see them doing that with um, Kyle Bly, um, who obviously was a teammate of Wemby. Um, a lot of talent um, and could be a really good defensive player. Number three, the Toronto Rap- or 13, the Toronto Raptors. Kobe Bufkin, point guard, shooting guard, Michigan. This pick makes sense. They're going to lose Van Fleet. Um, very good athlete. Number 14, the New Orleans Pelicans. Jalen Hood, Shafino, point guard, shooting guard, Indiana. Um, Hood, Shafino, Pelicans, good match. Would be a good bench player to start off. Um, but I think he's a wild card. He could go in the lottery or he could go at the end of the round. 15, the Atlanta Hawks. Casey Wallace, point guard, Kentucky. Um, this wouldn't surprise me because of Trey Young um, and him being in trade rumors. Um, and um, he's a good defender. Number 16, the Utah Jazz from the Minnesota Timberwolves. County George, shooting guard, small forward, Baylor. The Jazz here go with George, battle-tested player. Gets to the basket well, but he's not the best shooter. 17, the Los Angeles Lakers. Jordan Hawkins, shooting guard of Connecticut. Um, Hawkins to the Lakers here would be a steal. Hawkins is someone that could go in the lottery. Um, the Lakers could use the production and the youth from the two-guard position. And Hawkins is an elite shooter. 18, the Miami Heat. Leonard Miller, small forward, power forward, G League Ignite. Um, the Heat, I wouldn't be shocked, traded the pick or kept it to find youth that would fit their identity. Miller, um, his stock has been very inconsistent of late. Um, good three ball guy. Could develop defensively too. 19, the Golden State Warriors. Nick Smith, point guard, shooting guard, Arkansas. Um, Smith would make a lot of sense here because they may lose Jordan Poole in a trade or Clay Thompson in free agency. Smith struggled in college a year ago, being injured and was not consistent. But could be worth it if uh, he lives up to the hype. 20, the Houston Rockets from the Los Angeles Clippers. Olivier Maxson's Prosper, small forward, power forward, Marquette. Um... With their second first rounder, the Rockets go with Maxon's Prosper. Very aggressive player, um, very good defender, but needs to develop a shot offensively. 21, the Brooklyn Nets from the Phoenix Suns. James Najee, center, France. Um, don't love the match um, since they already have Nick Claxton. But Najee here would make sense if this pick was being dealt or if they traded uh, Claxton. Najee has solid physical tools. He's strong and lengthy and has a ton of potential defensively. 22, the Brooklyn Nets. Jed Howard, shooting guard, small forward, Michigan. Um, with their second of two first-rounders, um, I have the Nets going with Howard. Really good scorer, but an injury held him back this past year. 23, the Portland Trailblazers from the New York Knicks. Noah Clowney, power forward, Alabama. With their second first-rounder, the Blazers go so on who's played on good teams in Clowney. Um, flawed offensively, but really good defensive player that impacts games. 24 to Sacramento Kings. Chris Murray, small forward, power forward, Iowa. Um, I think this is everybody's favorite mock draft selection because of the obvious connection. Um, it does make sense. Harrison Barnes, a free agent. 25, the Memphis Grizzlies. Brandon Podzimski, shooting guard, small forward, Santa Clara. The Broncos of Santa Clara have just been doing it over and over and over again with these talented players. Um, very good 3 and D guy, versatile. 26, the Indiana Pacers from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Brian Rupert, shooting guard, small forward, France. This could be an interesting draft and stash player for Indiana if they go with that swing. Rupert, um can defend at the... Highest of levels, and his wingspan is really good. 27, the Charlotte Hornets from the Denver Nuggets. Bryce Sensabog, shooting guard, small forward, Ohio State. With their second first rounder, the Hornets take the talented wing in Sensabog. He gets threes, um, can swing a game. 28, the Utah Jazz from the Philadelphia 76ers via the Brooklyn Nets. Andre Jackson, small forward, Connecticut. With their third first rounder, the Jazz take... Another forward in Jackson. Smart, explosive player. Can guard anyone on the floor. 
29, Indiana Pacer from the Boston Celtics. Tariq Whitehead, small forward Duke. With their third first rounder, uh, I have Whitehead here to Indy. Um, he's somebody that would have been a lottery pick if he didn't break his foot his freshman year and would fit nicely off the bench. And number 30, the Los Angeles Clippers from the Milwaukee Bucks. Maxwell Lewis, small forward Pepperdine. The Clippers can use use almost everywhere on the roster. Lewis has the length and creates good shots for himself, which can cause him to move up draft boards. So there you have it for my latest mock. We have two more mock drafts to go, one tomorrow and one on Thursday. All right, now move on to the news and notes for today. I'm not a lot today compared to yesterday. Um, there's an old um, Chris Paul tweet from 2022 going viral that the Suns uh, put out there. They put CP3 a wizard, not thinking that they would trade him to the Wizards. There's so many, like, random tweets that people find and, and mock, like, like predicting in the future unintentionally kind of tweets. The Timberwolves intend to keep their court together of Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, and Rudy Gobert. Um, I don't know if they buy that entirely. I had Carl Towns traded for Trey Young pretty much, but um, we'll see what happens there. Um, the Wizards are in no hurry to buy out Chris Paul as if they can't find a suitable trade partner, they won't rush to let CP go for nothing. CP to the Grizzlies unlikely. Um, and that's according to Zach Lowe. Not a lot of confidence around the league in Memphis is acquiring Chris Paul amid jaw suspension. The Clippers and the Warriors were teams in contact with the Suns for Chris Paul before the Wizards deal. The Wizards include G League forward Isaiah Todd and the Bradley Beal trade going to Phoenix. So that's interesting. Probably to make the uh, money work and whatnot. The Raptors are unwilling to move OG Ananobi as Ananobi is generating tons of external trade interest, but Toronto is reluctant to make a deal. The Bulls price tag for Zach Levine. They're looking for multiple first-round picks and a young player or one first-round pick and high-end player. Um, I don't think anybody really wants to trade for him because... He's always freaking hurt. And he's not like a superstar. He's on like that Julius Randle type of stars. DeMar DeRozan. Like he's on that level. Damian Lillard prefers the Blazers to trade the pick as he would rather Blazers use the three pick in a trade. So he obviously wants to stay in Portland and wants the Blazers to build a contender around him. It all depends on what Charlotte does it too. So if they take Scoot, then have an auction for three and take the best offer. Um, Draymond Green declining his $27.5 million option for next season as he'll become a free agent. Um, LeBron and Draymond Green were spotted in France as... They were spotted aboard Sunday before Green reportedly opted out of his Warriors deal. Is he trying to recruit him to the Lakers or are they in France because they wanted to see Victor Wembanyama? Like, that's weird. The Pittsburgh Pirates called up former number one overall pick Henry Davis. Um, and he made his big league debut in right field against the Cubs yesterday. So that was pretty cool and he obviously uh was drafted as a catcher so i guess they feel he's not ready behind the plate but they think his bat's ready um joey Votto made his season debut last night for the reds as the reds won their ninth in a row um and joey Votto had a mic drop which was awesome 
The White Sox signed 14-year-old Brady Nelson, who has brain cancer, to an honorary one-day contract. So that's very nice. You love to see when teams do that. Um, some football news. Um, Dalvin Cook wants to play with DeAndre Hopkins. Um, that would be something epic for the NFL. How about this? Um, J.J. Watt, considering TV gig, as CBS has emerged as favorites to land J.J. Watt, should he pursue TV job? That is very interesting. And that would shake up a lot of the CBS broadcasting booths if that were the case. Um, apparently, um, Romo, CBS isn't happy with. So maybe J.J. Watt will be the next partner for Jim Nance. That would make sense. And I think Jim would like that because of their Houston ties and whatnot. But Jim was always or is still very close with Tony. So I don't just don't see them moving on from Tony. I think Jim would have to have a say in these decisions. Oh, the Flyers released um, new retro jerseys. So that was pretty cool. Um Chelsea signs a $66 million and Cuckoo as um, he becomes the first um, signing since uh, Punchettino's arrival. So, um, that's very interesting soccer news right there. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I'm going to go with the half unit on my pick. There's a couple I liked for best bet. And even some in soccer that I have under consideration as well. But one jumped out to me in baseball. Clayton Kershaw is just somebody that just hasn't aged one bit. I know the Angels are hot. Ah, it went up to four. Damn it. It went up to four at minus 130. I'm not laying that much juice. Now the value is gone. Um, so, um, I'm considering the Diamondbacks a plus 110 against the Brewers. Um, Yankees under three and a half runs against the Mariners. Because they're just not hitting right now. Um, then they're in the cards, Nats. Um, hmm, this is a hard one, guys. Um, so you know what? I need to take advantage of this op. Uh, and it's up to minus 120 under three and a half runs for the Yankees. Um, but I don't know if I really like that anymore because it went to that price. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay the half unit under three and a half Yankee runs, minus 120 for... My best bet of the day, just because the Yankees are not hitting, regardless of who's the pitcher. They're a one-man offense, arguably a one-man team. Aaron Judge is to the Yankees what Patrick Mahomes is to the Chiefs and to what Stephen Curry is to the Warriors. Lifelong guy for the team, and if you lose him, you're crushed. Like, remember how terrible the Golden State Warriors were that year without Stephen Curry? No, the Yankees aren't that terrible because the Warriors ended up with a top three pick in the draft and lost over six. We're going to lose over 60 games if it weren't for the pandemic. So, um, not saying the Yanks are that bad, but their offense is horrific without Aaron Judge. I mean, there's no other way to say it. So, you got to take advantage of these bets, even though uh, you had to lay some juice on this one for today. Okay. So that's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow 
recapping everything, looking at everything tomorrow. Another mock draft for you. Game 7 of Calder Cup tomorrow. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.